Hello again guys, welcome back sa ating channel and welcome to the second part of the discussion about the health indicators. Again, if you are not yet a subscriber, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, share this video as well, and comment your thoughts. So if this video is just a continuation of the health indicators that we discussed on the first part of the video. Uh, if you want to access that first uh, discussion about the health indicators, you can check the links in the description box. Now, we are done with the, uh, with the health indicators on how to compute for, for the fertility rates. Now, we are going to discuss on how to compute for the mortality rates. Just like I mentioned, pag sinabi natin vital statistics under your health indicators, we have the fertility rates and of course your mortality rates. Fertility rates refers to the birth while mortality rates refers to the deaths. Now, for the mortality rates, okay, so this includes your crude mortality rate or the general mortality rate, the specific death rate or mortality rate, the cause of death rate, infant mortality rate, neonatal and postnatal rate, maternal mortality rate, and your case fatality rate. Okay, so these are the examples that we're going to discuss under your mortality rates. And of course, there are so much more about mortality rates, pero ito lang mga cover natin during this discussion. Now, for the crude mortality rate, this is the general population. Now, for the general deaths, so the computation for this one is using this formula, the number of deaths in a year over the median population. So just like I've said in the first video, median population is referring to the estimated population as of July 1 of the same year. And the 1,000 is your constant number. So your crude mortality rate example po, Okay, is if there are total one of 109,543,263 okay, population in the year 2020 and the deaths reaches 1,673,000, 34,672 of the total deaths are due to COVID-19. So yung one, so ano kukunin natin dito? Kukunin natin yung total deaths on the same year which is 1,673,000 over the uh, 1 million, uh, 109,543,263, million five hundred forty three thousand two hundred sixty three, which is the total estimated population on the same year times one thousand, and that would give us this data. So that's what we are zero point zero zero nine times one thousand, and it will give you an answer of nine deaths. Ibig sabihin, there are nine deaths in every 1,000 population in the Philippines in the year 2020. Again, sorry, hindi ko yung nilagay dito, pero dapat lagi nating ialagay yung lugar kung saan yung kinukuha nating data at kung kailan or anong taon po iyon. Okay? Another one is your specific mortality rate. Kung kanina ang crude death rate is the general death rate or general population, whichever the cost is, Specific mortality rate naman shows rates of deaths in groups with specific characteristics according to the age group, sex, occupation, education, exposure to risk factors, combination of the above, and so on and so forth. So basta kailangan kung kaya mo siyang i-categorize yung population, which is a level 3 of clientele, pwede po natin gawin yan sa specific mortality rate. So kung gusto mong malaman yung particular death rate on a particular age group, then kunin mo lang yung population natin on that particular age group, then divided by the total estimated population on the same year. Same thing is true sa ating sex. Kung gusto mong malaman ang death rate sa female or sa male, Kunin mo lang yung population ng deaths in that according sa sex, occupation, and education. Now, for the specific death rate, the number of groups or deaths from a specified group over the median population as just like I said earlier. So, MSR then 1,000, 1,000, that is your constant number. For example, uh, there are 200,203 deaths among 65 years old out of the total deaths of 1,673,000 in 2020. So the population in that year is 109,543,263. So, ah, I'm sorry for this one. Medyo nagkamali ako ng nilagay. So ilalagay mo lang yun, 200,000. So 200,000, okay, let me just uh, edit that. So that's 200,000. 200,000. 200,203 divided by 109 million, which is total population. So, I'm sorry for that po, but let's just recompute. 
So, if you have calculators with you, you can actually uh, get along with me or sumabay kayo sa pagkocompute. Yeah. So, let's check 200,203 divided by 109, 543, 263. That's, um, yeah. So, that's 0 0.0018 times 1,000. That's 1.82. 1.82. Ibig sabihin that there are 1 to 2 deaths in every 1,000 population among age group of 65 years old and above in the Philippines in the year 2020. Ayan po. So, in the year 2020. So, that is your specific death rate. Okay? Specific death rate. Again, pinalitan ko lang po yung data na kami lang ko na input So, 203. Uh, 200,203 lang po yung deaths uh, um, in 65 years old and older. Okay? Another one is the cause of death rate. The cause of death rate naman po is made specific by relating the deaths from the specific cause. For example, due to cardiovascular disorder, due to COVID-19, due to tuberculosis. From a specific group. Okay? So, the factors that affect these rates includes completeness of the registration. Kung kompleto ba yung nairehistro na namatay due to these deaths. Okay? Composition of the population and the disease ascertainment level in the community. So, these three factors can affect the uh, result of this cause of death rate. Now, Example of this is what? The formula. So, the cost of death rate or C-DR, the number of deaths from the specified cost. Kailangan po may dash para ma differentiate siya sa crude death rate. Yan. Over the median population of the same year times the constant number which is 1,000. So, example po. Yes, there are 200,203 deaths among 65 years old and out of the total deaths, of 1,673,000 1, 1, in 2020, 34,672 is due to COVID-19. The population in that year is 109,543,263. So, substitute lang po natin, yung formula natin, number of deaths from specific cause. So, the cause of death is COVID-19. So, 34,672. More di uh, divided by the total population on that year, which is 109,533,533,463 times 1,000. So, ang crude death rate niyan is 0.31 or there are about less than okay, 0.31 deaths or pwede naman less than 1 deaths in every 1,000 population because of COVID-19 in the Philippines in the year 2020. So, that is an example of your cause of death trait. So, kung gusto mo malaman yung ibang cause, for example, cardiovascular disease, kunin mo lang yung deaths, okay, ng mga related sa cardiovascular diseases. Another one is the infant mortality rate. Let's define first what is infant. So, infant mortality rate measures the risk of dying during the first year of life. And this is the most sensitive index in the level of health in the community, your infant mortality rate. So, the higher the higher the IMR means the low levels of health standards due to the following reasons. Poor maternal and child health care, kaya nga MDG 4 and 5 natin nakapokus doon. Nutritional problems, poor environmental sanitation, and poor or deficient health service delivery. Ibig sabihin, kapag mababa or mataas ang ating high MR, may problema tayo sa mga aspetong ito sa ating gobyerno or sa ating komunidad. Now, infant mortality rate may be further subdivided into two subgroups. We have your neonatal mortality rate and your post-neonatal mortality rate. The, subdiv the subdivision is noteworthy because neonatal deaths are primarily due to prenatal or genetic factors while your post-neonatal is due to uh, environmental, genetic, nutritional, and infectious. Ano bang pagkakaiba niyan? Pag sinabi natin neonatal death rate, guys, these are the deaths within the first 28 days of life. While after 28 days, hanggang mag-isang taon ng bata, pag namatay siya within those life span, time span, post-neonatal naman po yun. So, 29 to 1 year old, then less than 28, ang tawag natin doon is neonatal rate.
Neonatal death rate will, uh, is related to prenatal and genetic problems, while postnatal is due to environmental, genetic, and nutritional plus infectious diseases. Now, uh, formulas are the following. The number of deaths under one year of age in the calendar year over the number of registered live births naman po. So, yung live births ang kukunin natin doon. Times the constant number which is 1,000. And this is the formula naman po for neonatal mortality rate which is the number of deaths under 28 days of age in a calendar year over the number of live births with the constant times 1,000. And post-neonatal naman po is over 28 days and less than one year of age over the number of registered live births in the same year. Okay, times the constant number which is 1,000. So for example, there are 1 million, uh, 109,543,263 million population in 2020. The total live births is 1,943,976. 1, there are a total of 157 1,450 deaths occur in the first year of life and 59,755 of it happens during the first 28 days. Ibig sabihin yung ating neonatal stage. Then compute for the post-neonatal. Para makuha natin yung population ng post-neonatal, isubtract po muna natin yung 59 and 1,000 and 157,000. So makakuha mong sagot dyan is 97,695. So, yan yung death sa ating post-neonatal or over 28 days. Pag minultiply mo yan, ay ginamit natin yung formula, 97,665 over 1,943,776 times 1,000. That would give us an answer of 50 deaths. At pag interpret natin yan, there are about 50 deaths in every 1,000 live births occurred in 28 days, over 28 days after birth in children less than 1 year old. Again, para makuha natin yung population ng post-neonatal, isubtract lang po natin yung total population ng infant death and your neonatal death. Okay? Whatever the result of that would be your post-neonatal death. Okay? So, that's how you're going to compute for this one. Of course, kapag neonatal death, ito ang gagamitin natin. 59,755,000. Pero pag infant ang kukunin natin, ang gagamitin natin na numerator is your 157,450. Sana po maliwanag tayo dyan. Okay? Next is maternal mortality rate naman po. Measures the risk of death from the causes associated with pregnancy naman po. The ideal denominator is the number of pregnancies because all pregnancies will lead to deliveries but not all pregnancies will lead to live births. So the formula is the number of deaths due to pregnancy, delivery, and perperium in a calendar year. Ibig sabihin, dapat may kinalaman sa pagbubuntis. And the number of live births on the same year. So kapag siya po ay namatay, in other than related sa pagbubuntis, hindi po siya i-a-add dito sa maternal mortality rate. Okay? Example, kung may maternal deaths tayo ng 1,698 in the year 2000, using the total number of live births, which is 1,766,440, this would give us the answer. So, 1,698 divided by 1,766,440 would give you an answer of 0.96 or there is one maternal death for every 1,000 live births. Interpretation, there was one maternal death for every 1,000 live births in the Philippines in the year 2000. So that is your maternal death. The last example naman po is your uh, case fatality rate measures the killing power of a disease or injury. So higher CFR means a more fatal the disease. Like for example here, this is the formula, the number of deaths from a specified cause over the number of cases of the same year times, ito naman po 100 lang ang ating constant number kasi ang kinukuha natin sa case fatality rate is the percentage. Okay? So, una, una, kukunin mo muna kung ilan lahat ang kaso na meron tayo sa isang specific na sakit. In this case, diarrhea, may 450 daw. At ang namatay is 277 subsequently. So, ang CFR niya is 277. Yun yung mga namatay doon sa actual cases. At ito naman yung total cases na meron. Times 100, that would give you an answer of 61 to, 50, 61 to 62%. 
So, meaning, there is 62% of all diarrhea cases in Navotas diet. Namatay yung 61 to 62%. So, that would be all. Thank you guys for watching.